Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Lewis and Kyle Show, where we have fascinating conversations with entrepreneurs, investors, authors, and a whole variety of really interesting people. Today is no different. I have the pleasure of interviewing Simon Severino on the podcast. He's the author of the new book, Strategy Sprints, and also the author of Habits of Success. In addition, he is the CEO of a global business consulting firm called Strategy Sprints, where he helps business owners and SaaS and service-based businesses like agencies run their companies more effectively. Uh, his motto or his offer typically is that he thinks he can double most businesses' revenue in 90 days or less by getting owners out of the weeds of day-to-day -day operations. This conversation covers what exactly he does when he jumps in to one of these service-based businesses or SaaS businesses to help them grow. Uh, that's his strategy sprints methodology, the types of questions he has them both through the exercises, the techniques, the changes that he implements. Uh, we discuss the bottlenecks most agencies face to growth, uh, preventing them from becoming all that they could be if they could just get out of their own way. We discuss some of those things and what they are and how to resolve them. I also ask Simon at the beginning about his career progression so we can understand who he is, how he got this far, et cetera. And as always on the Lewis and Kyle show, we discuss a whole lot more. I'm going to do a quick word from our sponsor and we'll get this party started. Enjoy. This episode is brought to you by our friends at VASA, the virtual assistant staffing agency. We hired our first virtual assistants from VASA to assist with our operations running the show back in June. But VASA is not just for podcast editors. If you need some extra hands to free up your time, let VASA help you with hiring for administrative, technical, and creative work. That's graphic design, cold callers, social media managers, sales reps, video editors, admin assistants, and more. Free up your time to focus on your highest impact work and learn more about VASA at vastaffing.agency or by clicking the link in the show notes to schedule a free strategy session with their team. Alrighty, back to the show. Simon, welcome to the podcast. I'm very excited to be chatting with you today. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. So a lot of people, and even when I was listening to you kind of in research for this conversation in greater depth, like this guy just really has got this game down. Like he understands agencies, he understands how to scale them, he understands business strategy, but then you kind of go so deep on all these elements, or right? you go super deep on marketing, you go super deep on ops, super deep on hiring. Uh, so for people who might listen to this and kind of have the false impression that they can listen to you for half an hour and like be up to speed on where you are, can you like do kind of speed run, get me up to speed on your career, maybe from the time we finished up at University of Vienna, got your philosophy and psychology degree, kind of the fast forward to today, like the how you acquired all this experience and knowledge, just so people can appreciate that it takes a, a bit of time. Oh, you have researched very well. Yes, I started philosophy and then uh, I needed a job. And it was the time where global strategy advisors, the big, the big consulting firms, they were looking for different kind of people who, who know how to solve problems, but they tackle that from a different angle. And so that was my chance. They were looking for um, natural science and, and even social science and even philosophy. So that was my chance. I came in. Uh, I, you just needed good grades. That's it. Um, top grades. Uh, and so I entered. I did fall in love immediately with the go-to-market things. And I said yes to every big project. So my, we, we were called by the biggest brands for the biggest questions to solve. How do we enter a market? How do we crush it in the market? How do we stay in the market? And how can we be better than our competitors? Slightly better, but now. And I was like, I love this question. It's intellectually stimulating. It's emotional stimulating. Can I do this every day? I was like, oh yeah, it's me. It's me. Right. We have a project. Who does the Shanghai project? I have me, 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 me. And everybody who had kids was like, no, 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 I don't fly to Paris. I am in Shanghai this week. I don't fly to Paris. And I was like, I'm coming. I'm coming. I have no kids. I'm coming. And so for the four years, every day I was on some top, top project. I learned so much. And then as soon as I knew how to do it, and then I went and did it on my own. And I started my own consultancy which after a couple of years, I was the bottleneck at, because you cannot grow if it's still everything around you. So I had to fire myself from operations and start scaling this thing. And so I hired a business coach. Business coach says, Simon, we have to get you two levels above fulfillment. I said, what is this? I don't know what this is, but it sounds great. And then we started. And the first thing was, okay, you cannot book Simon as a coach anymore. All right, so who will coach now? Well, create videos, create, g 
get the process out of your head. Write it down. That's how I created the book, Strategy Sprints. And I created 274 videos, modules explaining exactly what you do to scale a business, how you do marketing, how you do sales, how you do customer onboarding, how do you do retaining, how you do upselling, cross-selling, and um, specialized just on B2B businesses. So only agencies, consultancies, B2B software, because they have all the same problem. And, um, and I started going deep into those problems. And, and, and sharing the blueprints, the templates that work and discarding what doesn't work. So this is how we created the Sprint University, 274 templates, plug and play ready. And now I have coaches in multiple time zones and they use those templates and they help entrepreneurs build faster and have fun while building. Because that's important. Because if you don't enjoy the process of building, if you only have the goal Oh, I will enjoy my life one day when I sell it. You have a problem. You might never get to that point. You might burn out before because it's a, it's a series of sprints. You will, you will need energy and you will need motivation. Um, and stuff will happen on the way. So you need to create repeatable and, and fun processes. Otherwise you will not have the, the, the consistency and the endurance to get there. So would you say the strategy sprints is kind of the condensation, the strategy sprints methodology is the condensation of kind of all of this into one, like here's how you prioritize it. If you're at this stage, start here. If you're at this stage, start here. Yes. Basically there are two stages in, in when you, in building a business. The first is you are still exploring if you have something that works. And when you hit 35 K per month, now you have found something that works. You are now in stage two. And stage two means you have something that works. Now stop building the product. Now start scaling the product. It's basically two stages. In stage one, the only important thing is delivering. So the operations. Create that wow. And so we have a specific method where we create four levels and you unlock those levels. Like, let's say you are, I don't know, an, an agency, a UX agency, right? So an agency that helps with user experience or a data agency, business intelligence mm -hmm. agency. You create those levels, meaning you pick a time frame. Let's say you work six months with your people. You pick the ideal client. So of all the clients, the one that you had more fun with. And then you say, all right, what happened? What, what can I bring them at the beginning? They come to level zero. For example, they just have data, but no information, level zero. Level one, they start collecting the data. Hey, congrats, you are now at level one. You are a <laughs> data collector. You own the data. You don't know what to do with it. That's why you're level one. But at least, congrats to level one, you own the data. You are ahead of 50% of your competitors. They don't even collect the data. Level one, unlocked. Congrats. Now, level two, you own your data and you use it. You use it to inform your processes. Level three, you own your data and you leverage the data. Level four, the data creates value for itself and for the users, creating a network effect that creates defendability. So you see how quickly, I'm just brainstorming, but how quickly you can develop four levels of, you know, that you can unlock like a game. And that makes the operations better and the sales better and the user experience better. Because they are excited because they are unlocking levels all the time. So they love working with you. They, they will miss yeah, it's gamified. Stop working with them after mm -hmm. six months. They say, Oh, can I have six more months? <laughs> Great to have such an experience. And then, so you're improving sales. Then you're also improving marketing because it's much easier to tell them what you are doing. I say, Hey, you're at level. Do you want to reach level four? Yeah, sure. Okay. Tell me more. So marketing becomes easier. And also operations is easier because now everybody on your customer success team, on the delivery team, they know what to work towards. Some parts will be customized, but they will all work towards specific peak moments. And now it's much easier to create that high energy. 
So that's the first thing that we do on one smoothing operations, creating those four levels, creating the energy peaks. Then level two, we use these energy peaks to increase sales. Mm -hmm. So in these moments, you will ask, wow, congrats, you have unlocked level two. By the way, who else needs this? First time, they don't introduce you to anybody. Second time, they introduce you to two people. The third time, they introduce you to three people. Now you have five more clients. Because they come war. So out of one client, you have created five clients. You are scaling. That compounds. Now, your claim is that you can, you know, you jump into a business and double revenue within 90 days or double something within 90 days, something substantial. Do you only work with businesses at a certain threshold? So is that like if a business, do you wait till business is at that magical 35K mark for them to be you know, ready to work with a team like yours? Or is that claim just across the board? We also work with earlier stage teams sometimes if they are well-funded. And if we have the impression that the team is capable of executing sprint style, then we might even take them before 35K. But then you need to be so good at execution and then we might pick you to work with us. Otherwise, the standard sprint client is above 35K, between 35 and 80, 80,000 per month. And that's, and that's an easy doubling revenue because we just, we have something that works. We just have to simplify it, create the four levels and scale it, which for us is a very simple exercise. So that works all the time. It's much harder if you are below 35K because we don't know exactly how good are you? We will give you all the tools. So we will tell you exactly. It's three forms of interviews that you have to do in the first month. It's the problem interview, the prototype interview, and the solution interview. So, and, and we'll give you the exact blueprints, the frameworks. This is how many minutes you ask this question. This is how you document it, etc. So you will know exactly what to do. But. Some teams are great at executing, some are not. They find excuses. So that's tough. So below 35K, we have mixed results. And so we have to look really, hey, is this team capable of executing? Will they execute or will they find excuses? But above 35K, it always works because there is something that works. So they have shown that they can execute. And then with the right tools, a team that has you know, the right mindset and is executing, you give them the right tools, they're crushing it. So how are people finding you in this business? We have multiple ways where we say hello. So we have YouTube channels where we say, hello, hello, here we are. This is what we can do. I am on five podcasts every day since a year now. Many people are reading the book. It's in every airport uh, worldwide and it's on Amazon. Amazon is also a place where they find us. Uh, they find us on LinkedIn and we are very active on all social medias. So it's actually very easy to find us. Uh, if you put in our name, Strategy Sprints in Google, we own the first page. Even if you, even my personal name, Simon Severino, if you put it in there, I own the first page. So it's, we give the world many, many, many chances to find us. And then there are conversion mechanisms that work in an automated way. Oh, you are interested, come in. This is, this is what you can experience here. Oh, you like this? Look, there is more of that. Oh, you want to talk to our team? Click here and then we talk. So is that part of your return on luck framework? Yes, we have multiple marketing systems that have been working in, in, many, in many different situations. And so those marketing systems are both warm email systems, cold email systems, warm social media systems, cold social media systems. Cold means you talk to strangers. Hello, you run a business, I can help you. Ah, no, no, no. All right, and then you hear that 90 times, but the 91th time you have a conversation going on, that's a cold system. Not everybody likes that, but we have find a playful way to make it work. And then warm systems, referral partners. We use the small JV system and the big JV system. The small JV system is having 50 partners per week promoting you. So every week, one person writes in their email list about your offers. 
hey, my friend Louis, he has amazing data offers. You should meet him. And, and, and vice versa. You write in your email list, hey, Simon can double your revenue. This is an event that Simon has coming up. Go to his event. So these are small JVs and they build lists and they build awareness and they come warm because you have a list, people trust you and you are saying you should meet Simon. So they come with some trust already. That's a warm system. And then there are cold systems, calling strangers, emailing strangers, sending um, social media messages to strangers. And, uh, and so we like to create both inbound systems and outbound systems both cold and warm systems, because if you have enough of them, then you are super resilient because every single one of them actually can be taken away from you. Uh, you know, Google, Facebook, somebody, LinkedIn, oh, yeah. it's just to stop you for a while. It happens a lot. So we want to create multiple of those things because one can always be not working, but you have still uh, reliable revenues coming in every month. Is there a kind of critical level the business has to reach in sophistication to try to get referral partners? Or how do you go about starting if you don't have that at all as a marketing channel yet? You can start referral partnerships quite early. So as soon as you have good operations, so you're doing stuff that actually solves a, a, a pain for somebody, you can start having referral partners. And they might have an email list. And let me, let me give you some examples. So one of our partners is Google. Now, I will never have the email list size of Google. Um, I don't even try to. But you can find what's a win-win-win situation. So let's say you have a brand. So that, and that brand is working with the same people you're working with but they need to solve for something and you can do that. Then you can partner up because now you're creating a win-win for them. So now they're interested in sending you people. And so even if you have zero email list, you can start by either solving a problem that they have or by having a high commission percentage so that they are, for example, a YouTuber with 3 million subscribers. They just send to your offer. Maybe they get 30%, 35% off of what they sell. They make a couple hundred thousand. This is how you can cooperate with YouTubers, for example, if you have zero list. If you have a list, then you can say, all right, you are selling to agencies. I am selling to agencies, but we are selling different things. So can I promote you and you promote me? And then it's even without a commission, you can grow list together and you can start by having a thousand people on your list. If, if they have a thousand people on their list, then you can start already collaborating. That makes sense. A, I'm sure you see, again, a lot of early mistakes people probably make before they get to you just because if they have make it to 35K, they've probably... Again, gone through a series of trial and error on the row quite a bit to make it that far. But either at that stage or before, what are kind of ways people are getting in their own way, preventing themselves from growing, like standing in their own way and being their own bottleneck uh, that are fairly straightforward to resolve? Just people don't have the, either they're too busy to think through the obvious solution or it's just not even uh, something they would have ever thought of. Yeah, I see so many things. One is the spending, they spend on the wrong things too early. For example, I see people spending on marketing before they do 35K per month. You shouldn't actually spend any dime on marketing because you have nothing to market yet. You, have, you are still exploring what works. So spend on operations and sales and that's it. And then when you found that, then you start for the first time thinking about the first cent to put into marketing and everything social media is marketing. It's not sales. So first mistake I see, they spend in the wrong categories at the wrong time because there is a right moment to spend in marketing, but it's much later. Second thing is the mindset. They think they have to charge for time. So, hey, I can aggregate your data. It takes me six hours. I will charge by the hour. 
at the end of the month. That's the worst thing you can do. Because then the discussions with your client will be around, uh, can you make it in five and a half hours maybe? And so now you are talking about things that are irrelevant to you, irrelevant to them. Instead, the conversation that you want to have is around value. Okay, what's the next value that we can create together? What's the big problem that we can solve together? So to shift that conversation from hourly rate, daily rate to value, you have to change the way you charge. Best way to charge is for value up front. So, hey, I can help you save 35% on what you spend for having your data on the cloud. And I will take 5% of what I helped you save. And that's what you pay me after six months. So it's six months and my salary is 5% of your savings. That's a good offer. And you will do it a couple of times and then you will learn how to automate that, how to make it more efficient internally. And then it's totally fine. Now you're getting paid much more than you actually need, but it's fine for them because 5% of what you save them is a great deal. 10% is also a great deal. So if you can find a 10 to one relationship of you create 10 times the value and you take one tenth of it, and then you create a package that says, I can help you in six months, I can help you land five clients and you will pay me uh, one of those clients. That's a great deal. One to five ratio. It's a great start. Now you have a package. Worst thing is, okay, let's see how many hours it takes. And at the end of the month, I will charge you. Why? Because now the conversations are around the wrong things. You will never get out of that again with this client. Then yep. the second problem is you will have scope creep because now it's mm -hmm. not really clear what it is about. And so they will ask for other things in between. And now you find yourself hating that client because you're working all the time for them, but you're not making more money on them. So your team will burn out and the energy in the project is low. So with that energy in the room, you will never get a great testimonial. They will never get a three referrals out of that project. And that's a problem because now you are working, but you are, you are not building up anything and you are not building a network. So that's the second problem. The third problem, you have a, a, a miserable cash flow. Because you think, yeah, probably I'm making 60K this month. What do you mean probably? Yeah, if they pay. Because <laughs> you never know at the beginning of the month what, what you're making. And that's a problem because you spend during the month. So you don't actually, you don't know what to spend. Um, can I hire a salesperson? I don't know. Let's wait for the end of the month. It's a very bad situation when you're running a business. You need to take those decisions. And if you don't have the data, you know, if you don't have the, the numbers, um, how are you taking those decisions? You're basically just gambling or flying in the dark. And that's not a great way to fly a plane. So that's why you have to change the way you charge. That's one of the 274 modules that we have. Reverse the way you charge. You charge for value. You package the offer and you charge up front. Let's do a couple of quick questions and then can let you transition to the next thing. But you, you, on another podcast I was listening to, speaking of spending and what the right things to spend on, you said buyer intent is something that everyone should be thinking more seriously about spending on. What is an example of that and why is it so useful? Yeah, a dollar spent on Facebook ads is different than a dollar spent on Google ads, for example. Or let's take YouTube. Let's take YouTube, which when you are on YouTube, you are looking to learn something. You don't want to be interrupted by an ad. So a dollar spent on a YouTube ad is not generating one and a half dollars for you because in that moment, they don't want to buy anything. They want to learn something. They're learning, you know, how to trade Bitcoin. And then you tell them about your stuff. They don't care. It's annoying. The same buck on a Google ad 
it's much better because in that moment, they are typing in a search system, where do I find a data coach? And now that's by your intent. This is exactly when they are looking for it. So you scan all the opportunities for marketing, for sales, for just a few places where people are looking for you, for your offers. So they are now, right now, having a problem. Right now, they're looking for a solution. This is where you want to be top of mind. So there are specific CRMs that you can use that give you buyer intent. Spend more for that, less for Facebook, Instagram, and whatever. And by spending, I mean your attention, but also your budget, right? Uh, but also how many hours you put in per hour, per day. So, I, you know, friends of mine, when, when we had, what was this thing? Um, clubhouse, clubhouse, right? Friends of yeah. mine, hey, let's do a clubhouse pod. And I was like, no, Simon, what's going on with you? People are just there to have fun here. thing out. Yeah. So they said, you're the marketeer, right? Uh, why don't you like that? Let's, you know, let's create some rooms and create some stuff there. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't think I should be putting my time and attention into this. Maybe later on, if it becomes really a thing, but I don't think it will ever become a thing. And so it turns out it never became a thing. Uh, and especially there was no buyer intent there. Everybody was looking, okay, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Where's the party? But nobody was looking to buy anything. So be careful and scan the opportunities, the marketing opportunities, the sales opportunities by are these people right now having a problem? Do they want to solve it? And will they react positively when they find a way to solve it? These three things come together. You should focus on this on being there. So, and this is where we focus on being totally present in those points. That's why I told you about Google. If you, if you mm -hmm. Google us, you find us because Google is where people are looking for stuff. So we True. both, they find us on YouTube with long form content where we teach stuff. Hey, this is how you can create a revenue system. This is how you can set up your CRM. This is something that I would teach on YouTube and I do that very frequently because people are looking to learn on YouTube. And then from there, I invite them to, to more intense kind of things. And I want to be on Google and I want to have Google reviews and I want to be found on the first page and ideally own the first page of Google because this is where people look for stuff. Instead, yeah. I don't really care about being present on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we have fun there, but I don't expect any sales there. And I, I wouldn't put more than five minutes a week into being there. So a lot of people that haven't found, haven't started a business yet might consider like a service-based business because again, you can get cash flow right away and things like that. What, obviously it's difficult to speak purely in the abstract without knowing a person and their skill set and their background. But what are some, in your opinion, decent types of service businesses to consider starting in 2022, if you're kind of young, you can learn anything. You've got a couple skills, but you're like, hey, maybe I could go out and try to sell this and start an agency. Oh, that's that's pretty easy. Go for things that you can easily start, easily be good at, and that are low risk and high profit margin. So everything consultancy, everything agency is pretty easy. It's pretty like easy. So type, like the it. types of services to offer or the types of things to offer. So for example, if you're yeah. not like a programmer, doing data and analytics might be difficult, but it's not, something that's just like, I know, like for example, on Twitter, everyone says, oh, go start a Legion agency in 2022. It's the easiest thing. Like, I don't know if you think that's good advice or if there's something similar or graphic design. Yes, it's easy to start. It's easy to scale. You have incredible high margins. Yes, a lead gen agency is every, every kind of B2B agency is easy to start and it's easy to make a ton of money with, and it's also easy to scale. Most people don't know how to scale it, but that's what we can teach them. 
But, but when you start starting a business, just look at a high ticket offer where you just need 10 to 15 clients per year to be happy. And you don't need a ton of people and you don't need any machines. You can start it in a week and you can make your first million in the first year. And, and you can keep 90% of that revenue in profits. How cool is that? That, that everything advisory, consultancy, is that. Everything agency is that. Where would you say, so for people, I, I think if they're at the 35K threshold, it's very clear that you, you are one of the best resources for scaling. But what would be some recommended resources for someone who's like, wow, I want to go out and start a services for this business, but obviously I'm not going to, with what I know now, be able to go from zero to a million dollars my first year. Like, where would you recommend someone to go and learn the necessary things to take something like lead gen and bring that to million dollars so the best book to learn how to test products is by jake knapp and it's called sprint this is a book where you can learn actually how to test if the market takes a product before you build it so in five days you can test it and that book gives you everything to test it When you pick a business and go, okay, how do I start and grow a business? The book for that is Strategy Sprints, because that gives you everything, how to start marketing, scale marketing, start sales, repeat sales, how to onboard clients, how to make them happy, how to keep them happy. So with these two books, you can go very far. On the product level, Sprints, not Sprint, Sprint by Jake Knapp, and on the business level, Strategy Sprints by Simon Severino. With these two books, you can go very far when you are starting, and now you have invested 40 bucks, which is a great investment into building a business. Well, Simon, this has been a blast. Thank you for sharing some tips and tricks with me. Like I said before we started, listened to a lot you said on these other podcasts, and it's just a checklist of things. I'm not doing a perfect job at that I could immediately see the return on investment if I took the time to implement and execute and get organized with. So I appreciate you sharing so much wisdom for free uh, on all these different channels. And where should people uh, follow you if they want to be in the loop? I know you, you have an email list you discussed. You got LinkedIn. I don't know what's the best to start here point. Yeah. So YouTube is one place where you find me. My channel is called Simon Severino. You can grab the book Strategy Sprints on Amazon. And... Um, our website is strategiesprints.com. You can find a ton of resources for free there. And you own the first page of Google for the term strategy sprints. <laughs> so there you go. Well, Simon, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good one. Thank you. Keep rolling. That closes out this conversation with Simon Severino from Strategy Sprints. Three takeaways for me, and then we will all move on. First takeaway, and these are going to be quick, quick, quick takeaways today. Simon has been at this for a decade plus. It is going to take time to get on his level. Again, this is something, I don't know if I'm telling you, maybe I'm the only one who needs to hear this, but again, I'm like, he's got all these ideas and all these things he's just so good at and so organized with it. I've just not figured out yet all of them. But you know what? I've not been at it for a decade plus. So it's going to take time to get to his level. Got to be patient. Got to appreciate the reps and the process that's gone into his expertise. But I can appreciate learning from him and hopefully accelerating my journey, though I can't expect it to be overnight just from reading his book or having a 35-minute conversation with him, of course. Second takeaway is about how key education is. Uh, Simon himself, right? He's a coach, but he also hires coaches to help accelerate him and whatever he's doing. That's been a super recurring theme of people on this podcast is that they all hire coaches to help them advance in various areas. I want to read his book. I mean, it's applicable to what I'm trying to do professionally. So I'm going to read it, go from there. Third takeaway uh, is just how... A lot of the main things he has businesses do are just he helps them simplify and helps them keep it fun. Uh, one of the worst things to happen, and he's talking about whether this is internally or with a client, is if your team's burnt out and there's no enthusiasm for a project or for something that's going to be really difficult and consuming uh, and everyone burns out, then you're not going to get testimonials. You're not going to get referrals. You're not going to deliver a good job. It just sucks. So simplify, keep it fun, and avoid burning out is takeaway number three. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Simon Severino. Support the show if you'd like to support the show. You can do so by subscribing. That's super helpful, whether you're on Apple, YouTube, Spotify, anywhere else. 
So share this episode or any other episode with someone who might enjoy it and who might learn a thing or two, as hopefully you did, or just listen to another episode yourself. There's about 130 of them, and they're all pretty good in my humble opinion. Check out our sponsor, VASA, the Virtual Assistant Staffing Agency, if you need help scaling your operations. And our editor came from VASA, which is great. I would check them out if you need help growing your business and whatever it is that you do. And that's it from me. I will see you next time with a new episode. Bye-bye.